Hi there, so in this lesson I'm going to talk about how to see like an artist. Um, so in my last uh, exercise we were talking about looking and um, the ability to sort of train yourself to keep flicking your eyes up to sort of mine your visual experience for information. Um, today we're going to talk about looking um, and I picked this uh, drawing. This is by an artist called John Titchell taken from the Ian Simpson book on drawing. And um, what I think it illustrates is um, the exercise I'm going to show you now is all to do with um, seeing how objects relate to the environment around them and how you can use one object to measure another object. So instead of trying to um, look at things as sort of separate, isolated objects, you're much more looking around the object to find um, clues um, to help you with your measuring. So it's all about this uh, switch from the left brain to the right brain. Say so the left brain sees things um, in sort of simplified abstract terms. Um, the right brain see, doesn't really see objects like houses or trees, or in this case, um, chairs and bottles. It sees things like shapes, lines, directions, um, interactions of line, and uh, it creates a different uh, a different feel to your drawing. Okay, so it's a it's a bit of a it's a jump. It's something that we're going to try and train ourselves. But I've got some great exercises that should uh, help you with that. Okay, so this exercise um, I have taken from a book on drawing by Bernard Dunstan. Um, he was a really great artist and uh, wrote some great books on drawing and painting. And uh, in it he had a couple of exercises which help train you in this ability to sort of see things in relation to each other. Okay, so what we want to do with this exercise is we're going to try and draw these matches as accurately as possible. We don't need to get into too much like detail with like the number of sides they've got, but we want to try and get the proportions right and the placement right. And the way we're going to do that is to try and look at them and understand how they interact with each other. So if I've got my cursor here, so let's say we start with this match head here. OK, so if I was to, one of the ways you can measure and try and get a feel is to drop imaginary lines down from things. So in this case, I can sort of drop an imaginary line down like this. OK, and that gives me that match head. Now, what you'll notice is straight away that has created a triangle. And this is the sort of thing we want to do. If we can see that triangle and make a good effort to try and draw that triangle roughly with the right proportions, that's going to help us um, get these in the right place. OK, so once we've got two dots, then let's say we move on to this next match head here. OK, then we can try to understand that match head in relation to these other two. This is triangulation. OK, so we can sort of see if we were to draw a line down here. OK. We can get a sense of where that match sits between those two. So it's a bit less than halfway. OK, and then that creates a suggested triangle like so and another one like so. OK, so if we can tune into that, that's really going to help us. Then we place this match head. So really to draw these matches, you need two points. You need one at the head and one at the uh, the bottom. So what we could do is we can measure. OK, so we can say we've got this and this. And we can measure that perhaps using our hand or just our eye. And we can say, well, that's probably just a little bit longer. OK. Now, in terms of getting the diagonal, um, there's a trick here. One of the things you can do is to try and compare it with. Um, let's see if I draw a straight line like that. OK, if you imagine a straight line, OK, then you can sort of try to work out what that angle is. Um, one way to do this is to try and imagine you've got the faces of a clock. OK, um, so this would be. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, three o'clock. So you could say, well, this is probably if that's six o'clock, 
then you could say, well, that's roughly, I don't know, maybe sort of half three, four o'clock, that sort of time, um, time. So you can sort of roughly understand what that angle is. OK. Um, anyway, so you establish where that is, but that's not the only thing you can do. You can also um, you could try and you bring a line across, let's say, say, imagine a straight line like that. OK, and then you can see that this match, um, this match head here. OK, is slightly higher than the bottom of uh, that match. The end of that match there. OK, so I'll just go through and show you some of the sorts of ways I would measure. So perhaps I would draw a line and uh, imagine a line up here. OK, um, and then that says that this is, you know, we've got a little bit of a distance here. So that gives us the end of that one. You'll notice that this match, if we dot up there, it actually points towards that dot. OK, like so. So there's a relationship there. OK, um, this pointing effect is quite good. This match, OK, it almost points towards the end of that match. OK, so that helps us with that one. Um, this creates a bigger triangle almost that cuts through that match head like so. Like that, and that creates a triangle like there. OK, so I hope you get the idea. Um, perhaps I'll do I'll do a quick one now for you um, just to show you, you know, it, it's a, it's a difficult exercise, but one that's worth having a go. So I'll do a speeded up version for you. As a little note, I would just suggest something when you start off. Um, you can imagine um, When you start off and you want to just try and get a rough sort of sense of a placement, you can do this sort of thing. This is more with your mind's eye than actually drawing it. You need to just get a sense of like how wide it is and how tall it is. Um, that's going to make it a lot easier to fit it on the area that you're working with. OK, um, so I'm just going to try and do this by eye. So we'll start. OK, so I hope that was useful. You could see that I was trying to make little dotted lines to try and join them together. If you observe them very closely, you should be able to identify maybe a few mistakes. Um, that's a good thing. Um, if you can see them in mine, you'll be able to see them in yours. And it, these exercises, again, these are things that you should practice. So this is such an easy one to set up and uh, it will become so useful when you come to take on more complex subjects. Anyway, so there's a there's a next stage to it. So we'll, let's have a look at that. OK, so in this version of the exercise, what I want you to do is to get hold of a piece of string and uh, not too long and just drop it on the table in a sort of random formation like this. So this is um, a little bit more challenging than the match exercise because you have to work with the curves. OK, but um, I'm just going to illustrate uh, how you might sort of go about it. Um, so. One of the first things you can do with this exercise to make it more easy is when you're drawing the curves, initially draw them as straight lines. OK, this is a sort of an idea from academic art, which is that it's easier to assess a straight line um, and then turn it into a curve. When you try to draw it like a curve, you'll tend to smooth everything out. Curves tend to be actually have more of this angular quality. OK, um, so yeah, use straight lines. OK, and like with the same with the exercise with the matches, what we're trying to do is we're trying to understand how things relate to each other. So in this case, let's say, for example, if we take this point where it starts, OK, so that creates a negative shape. Let's imagine just like that.
so that shape sort of helps um then when it comes to these ellipses that are formed um you know it's useful to try and assess what's the height and what's the width okay that can be useful for assessing those dimensions and then of course you can go around and fill it in and then like with the uh, the matches we might drop that line down okay we drop that line down and that will help us to find this where that piece of string uh, starts so we could draw this line across like so and that tells us you know that this comes a bit lower you see this comes a little bit lower than that bit um, so by bringing this across, that's also given us this negative shape. So we can see that as a triangle, it's, it's quite a, a thin triangle, and that would help us with that. Um, as a, other sorts of things, so this one, in terms of it's, it's got plenty of height here, um, its highest point is about there. So that line there tells you the the widest point and then you might try to understand well how does that so that's almost level with that so there's there's no exact way to do this um but the idea is to start thinking in these terms okay so like with the matches i'll do a quick speeded up version and just see how accurate i can get with it So there you go. So you might see some mistakes with that. Um, it's not too bad. It's quite a quick effort. Um, but the idea with these exercises is they're like practice. You're practicing and practicing. And then the idea is when you come to more complex subjects, you can apply it. So I'll just give you a quick example of that as well. So this is another illustration from the Ian Simpson book. And um, this is an exercise that he's suggesting. Now, I'm not necessarily suggesting you do it here but uh, you can probably get the idea straight away, which is that when you're drawing, so the idea is that when you're drawing, you can, if you place an object, a complex object, and it has a, a more um, sort of linear background, you can use that background to understand the shapes around it. Okay, you can use it to understand that shape. Like so so you can use these negative shapes so it actually gives you more of these negative shapes to work with so when you are out uh, you're choosing your subjects if you can find um, buildings or objects that have um, shapes behind them then you can use those shapes you see to better understand the actual more complex shape that you're trying to draw uh, so you can probably make a bit more sense of this one now. So going back to this first image, you can probably understand a bit more now what's going on. Um, if you see there's all these lines coming down here, um, the way the shapes are interacting, he sort of used the table and the shapes behind to help understand the chair, do you see? That's what I think all these little marks are. All these shapes are helping to understand that big form. So there's some exercises for you. The matchstick exercises, the piece of string. Um, if you want to have a go with this, the sorts of things that work quite well are maybe doing an interior scene where you've got some pictures on the wall. Um, those pictures might create a sort of measuring device where you can understand other bits of furniture like chairs or something like that. Anyway, give it a go. But just remember, the main thing we're after here is we're trying to adopt a particular way of looking at the world. Um, when students hand me their work, I've, I've seen some of the work that comes in. What often people do is they will draw objects in isolation. So you will have an object just surrounded by white paper. 
and uh, it's useful to try to just be aware of that. That's what you call, that's like a study of an object um, and there's nothing wrong with it. But to exercise this particular way of seeing, you need to draw objects and you need to include the surrounding objects as well. Even if it's just background, even if it's something as boring as maybe a tablecloth or um, other forms that help you understand the object that you're trying to draw. Okay, so I hope you find that useful and have some good luck with it. Um, so leave some comments below um, if you've had a chance to practice it or anything's come up and uh, I'll see you again soon. So thanks a lot. Bye.